name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I want to talk a little bit now about nature and the Bible. Because since I have come to this mountain to live, I have realized that nature is a book. St. Anthony himself said when he was asked by a visitor, Father, why, why you have no books? How do, you, how do you learn? How do you study? How do you read? St. Anthony extended his hand and he showed, he showed this whole wadi and he said, this is, this is my book. So I, I remember these words of Father Anthony and I have learned myself to regard this, this valley and these mountains behind me as my book, the book in which I learn the meaning of the Bible. We can remember very clearly that Abraham was told by God to sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah. Moses went to Mount Sinai to, to receive the Ten Commandments. Elijah was sent to Mount Horeb to escape from persecution and death. John the Baptist was, went, lived in the deserts and was considered an angel of the desert. And Jesus Christ himself went to the mountain to pray in silence when he was uh, in need of, of replenishing his spirit, restoring his spirit. So mountains and deserts have been all through the Holy Bible the abode of those who are living solitary in communion with God. To be close to God, it is a very great advantage to have a solitary place, an empty place, where there is no mark of human occupation, where there is no mark of human civilization, where there is no mark of human suffering, where the nature, the nature itself, is itself God's hand of, upon you. All right, so let me read for you two or three verses from Genesis. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Now, on this side, on the right-hand side, is the east. And in fact, the Red Sea is just beyond these mountains here. And on the left side is the west, where the sun sets every day. Now, when I first came to the mountain, I, I was aware that, of course, the sun set in the west and that it rose in the east, but because I couldn't see it rising exactly behind these mountains, I first let it go. I concentrated on the clouds and the light of the sunlight through the clouds. Then I found that on the evening of the full moon, when the full moon is rising, it rises in the west, and the sun is still setting. The sun is in the east, rising in the east in the morning, and the moon is still setting in the west. So every month at, at the full moon, I have the sun rising, the great yellow orb of the sun rising behind these mountains. And I have the yellow orb, the great yellow circle of the moon, descending in the west. So for a while, for a half an hour or so, some minutes, I have the two great lights which God created, both of them alike. The sun and the moon to my left and right and the light of the two is reflecting on each other, and I feel that I'm caught in the middle of creation. I feel that this is a moment of holiness. This is a moment when God shows himself to me through his nature, through his lights. And I remember the words of Genesis, that God made these two lights to shine, one from the day rising, and one from the night setting. And for a while, they are together. This means that day and night become one, as we are one with our Creator. And I have felt this lesson, this blessing, a blessed lesson from the Lord through these two great lights which he put in the sky. So with the sun, with the sun and the moon together in the sky for, for a short time each, each full moon, I feel that God has opened a window for me into heaven, opened a window for me into creation. Astronomers say that when they are looking at the stars or at planets, they are looking back in time. They're looking at what was happening many, many, many light years away ago. So I feel too that I am looking at a moment, I'm standing, I'm standing here on the top of this mountain, right between the sun and the moon in the moment of creation. This is what we call memorial, when we are using the Holy Bible to remember God's actions, to remember God's gifts, to remember God's words, to remember his promises. And in this mountain, I feel that there is a memorial 
in the, in, the, in the astronomical bodies. It says in Genesis that God made the stars also. And this, hap this has happened to me from the beginning. When I, when I come back from the Mass at 2 o'clock in the morning, we pray at midnight and I come back at 2 o'clock, I usually lay down on the ground and I look up and especially in those two weeks or 10, 12 days when the moon is not visible, I can see the whole Milky Way and all the Orion and all the, all the constellations of, of this part of the Earth. I can see them all in the sky. And I see how many stars are twinkling, twinkling. And I feel that like God said to Abraham, you will have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky and grains of sand on the sea. So I feel that the stars are like the eyes, the, the, the eyes of, of all of us, that these are the Christian souls who have passed into paradise. So we can, we can take from the Holy Bible and from nature a memorial, a memory of God's promises, of God's actions, of God's gifts to us. I want to read for you a few more verses now to, to show you how, how this works. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Now you can see how it is said, and the rough places, the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places made plain. A desert in the desert, there is a highway for our God. When I came to this mountain, I was crooked. My life was crooked, my mind was crooked, my heart was crooked. I was not in good condition. And since I've lived here, God has straightened and straightened and straightened me. The desert where John the Baptist lived and, and lived out these words in Isaiah's prophecy. I have lived here and I have been helped by God to straighten myself. For her iniquity is pardoned in the desert, in the, in the straightening of the, the lowering of the mountains and the rising of the valleys in my life. The mountains of sin and the valleys of goodness have become even. God has lifted me and pardoned me. She hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. My soul has received far more than double of gifts for the sins which I have committed. So many gifts of glory in this place. So I want to, I want to share with you all that in any place where you live. Regard nature, regard the memorial of God, the memorial of his actions. In a garden, in, in trees, in, in, in rivers, anything that you see in nature that is beautiful or that has a symbolic meaning for you, take it, take it out, apply it to the Bible and you will find it helping you. Look at this one from Isaiah. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is one of my favorite passages because since I came here, I came here at age 40. I was already past, uh, past my youth. And I have done more physically, I have run more and not been weary, more in the last 20 years than I did in the first 20 years. God has made me like a youth renewed, like an eagle mounted up. I run up and down this mountain with the strength of the Holy Spirit, with the strength of the grace of God, with the strength of St. Anthony and the, and the the desert saints with me. God has used this place to show me that the spirit is like an eagle. And I have seen eagles flying overhead. They migrate from South, South in Africa, they migrate to Europe. And I've seen them pass through here every year around Easter, around, around Pascha, they pass through. And I've seen the crows who live with me day by day. The black crows who, who fed St. Paul in, 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 in the fellow monastery. The crows come and they crouch on the rocks while the eagles fly overhead. And I have remembered the power of, of God's gift when he says, you shall not grow faint, you shall not grow weary, you shall mount up, you shall rise up as eagles. And this has happened to my soul. 
And I, I offer to you this gift of God's memorial. Take the words of the Holy Bible and find yourself reliving, recreated in them. Find yourself growing strong and young and glorious again. There is, of course, one last word which should be said on this subject. And we find it in, in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation we find that there is a terminus to all of this. That this life which we live now will not be forever. We find that God has put an end, or he will put an end. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. The apocalyptic quality of the book of Revelation, matching many passages in the prophets, again uses nature. God says there will come a time when I will bring all things to an end. The Archangel Michael will destroy Satan. He will be cast down a second time. And all the, all the false prepar preparatory images which have been put in front of us will disappear. Even the sun and the moon and the stars will disappear. And there will be no need of their light because God will lighten the Holy Jerusalem. God will be the gift of light. There will not need a temple because God and Jesus Christ will be the temple. So again, nature is used in the book of Revelation as the terminus of this glory which I have seen now, which has given me the courage to live here as an old man, still rising up, still moving and, and moving freely. But it will come to a terminus, to an end, when my spirit will be merged in glory with the spirit of the saints. So I, I invite you, I, I offer you the Holy Bible's treatment of nature as a memorial of God's gifts and blessings upon us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.